John Newby with John 2028 20, Apologetics. John, today's video, we're going to go over the scripture on the death of Jesus Christ and the historical evidence outside of the Bible that supports it and the events which occurred. 27, 45 through 54, we're going to read about the death of Jesus from the scripture first. And it starts at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see if, whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again and, and released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection and went to the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the soldiers of the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They had said, truly, this is the Son of God. Now let's go to the historical evidence of these claims. Now, after we just read, there are three main claims that the scripture says. The three hours of darkness after the death of Jesus, the earthquake, and the graves being opened and the dead being raised to life. Is there any historical evidence of these events occurring that is not in the scripture? Let's see, shall we? Emperor of Rome who had the library inside the Pantheon wrote a five volume set called The History of the World in 221 AD quotes Thallus the historian from 52 AD and he writes Thallus in his third book of histories explains away the three hours of darkness as an eclipse of the sun unreasonably as it seems to me for the Hebrews celebrate the Passover on the 14th day according to the moon and the passion of our Savior falls on the day before the Passover but an eclipse of the sun takes place only when the moon comes under the sun and it cannot happen at any other time but the interval between the first day of the new moon and the last of the old that is at their injunction how then should an eclipse occur when the moon is almost diametrically opposite of the sun so julius is writing about how thallus quoted the event and how people were trying to explain away the event with a natural occurrence but everyone knew that it doesn't make any sense it couldn't have been an eclipse because it didn't meet the timeline that is an acknowledgement that the event happened and it's an acknowledgement that at the time the society the people were trying to reconcile trying to wrestle with what had occurred and try to explain it away we kind of feel that today don't we people do the same thing today tertullian who worked in the roman archives in 197 a.d wrote at the same moment about noontime the day was withdrawn and they who knew not that it was foretold concerning Christ through it was an eclipse. But you have this in your archives. You can go read it there. So he's writing about how you can go read about this event as well. And it's in their archives. Flagian of Tralles, a non-Christian, wrote Olympiads in the middle of the 2nd century. Quote, in the fourth year of the 202 Olympiad, which is July AD 29 to June AD 33, wrote that there was a great eclipse of the sun greater than it had ever been known before, for the sixth hour of the day was changed into night and the stars were seen in the heavens. The sun being blotted. But we're going to go ahead and go to the evidence for the earthquake. And we're going to start off with the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration at www.noaa.gov, which is a U.S. government federal agency. And they record that in 33 AD an earthquake occurred at the time during the crucifixion of Christ. Also the catalog of earthquakes in Israel and in adjacent areas also recorded earthquake at around 33 AD. Journal of Geophysic Research reports an earthquake in the Judea region that near the temple in Jerusalem was also damaged. Origins archeologist Dr. Austin visited the Dead Sea Scroll layers in the area and found this to be true. The sedimentation rock layers show that an earthquake occurred around 33 AD and of course there is ancient historical records written by Flasian of Tralles who wrote that an earthquake occurred in Bithynia and overthrew a great part of the city of Nicaea in the year the fourth year of 202 Olympiad which is between July AD 29 and June AD 33 at the time of the crucifixion of Christ 
Origen in 184 through 253 AD wrote in regards to the eclipse. He talked about the eclipse and then put in there that the great earthquake which then took place, Phlegian II, I think, has written in the 13th or 14th book of his Chronicles. So he's also quoting about the earthquake and quoting other people writing about it as well. Eusebius, a historian with Constantine, wrote, Jesus Christ underwent his passion in the 18th year of Tiberius, which is AD 33. Also at the time, another Greek compendium was fined an event recorded in these words, the sun eclipsed, the city was struck by an earthquake, and in the city of Nicaea, many buildings fell. So we have evidence through science, we have evidence through historical documentation, all talking about the sun being blotted out, being earthquakes all the time in 33 AD, all centered around Jesus Christ. Now the third topic is any evidence of people resurrecting, people coming back to life after the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. Well, straight from the horse's mouth, we can go to Pontius Pilate, who wrote to the Roman Emperor, which he was quoted by Justin Martyr, shortly after the death of Christ, and quote, and at the time he was crucified, there was darkness all over the world, the sun being darkened at midday, and the stars appearing. But in them appeared no luster, and the moon, as if turned into blood, failed in her light. And in that terror, dead men were seen that had risen, as the Jews themselves testified, and to fear of the earthquakes remained from the sixth hour to the ninth. So Pontius Pilate hits all the topics that we've talked about today. Ignatius, the first century, wrote to Talians out of his seven letters, quote, many bodies of the saints that slept arose, their graves were being opened. He descended indeed into Hades alone, but he arose accompanied by a multitude. And during this time, the Christians were heavily persecuted by the empire, by everybody. There is no recordings of any of these events happening that do not agree with these events happening. And what I mean by that is there's no writings from non-Christians, from Jews, from Romans, from anybody, Greeks, that say the Christians believe this craziness or they believe that craziness about the sun or about earthquakes or about people rising after Jesus' death and resurrection. None of, none of those writings that we have contradict any of these statements. It's people trying to figure these things out. It's people trying to reconcile with these events. People trying to grasp and wrestle with them happening and trying to explain them without a supernatural cause. It was well known and believed that the Christians believed that Jesus died and rose again. It was well known and believed the writings of the, in the early church and the Christians. And yet they never denied that these events happened. They just tried to explain them. So with that, I've given you an example from Pontius Pilate and a first century writer, all saying that people arose after the death and resurrection of Christ. And it was well known. And what I've read to you today is just a handful of the evidence that proves the events which occurred. It's written in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The historical evidence supports this the scientific evidence supports this Jesus Christ is Lord Jesus Christ is God he died he rose again 